Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Discovery Gen 2 5 to 30 by 56 millimeter objective SFIR scope. This is an HD glass first focal plane scope. It is a budget scope in terms of first focal plane scopes. It does have illumination and the turrets are in milliradians. So we will take a look first at what's in the box. Then I will do some scope cam footage. We'll show you how it looks compared to some of the scopes that I did in my previous Discovery Scope video, which I'll link that at the end here. You can check that out too. And then we'll do a little bit of a tracking test and give you the general impressions on this scope. These retail for about 350, if I'm not mistaken, and I will drop links in the description and comments below for you guys so you can check them out yourself. If you do happen to use my Amazon links, that helps the channel. As you may know, I do not monetize my channel via YouTube, which means no commercials for you. So I really appreciate if you guys do use those links. But anyway, let's get into it. First, we'll show you what's in the box. The first thing you're gonna notice about these scopes is they come in really nice packaging. So this is what the box for this one looks like. And we'll go ahead and open it up here. All right. And first thing you're gonna notice when you open it, it has really nice cutouts for everything. So let's take a look at the documentation first. So you're gonna get your card here, which has all the details. So really important, it has a total elevation adjustment of 33 MRAD, windage 17 MRAD. It's a 34 millimeter tube with a 56 millimeter objective, okay? It weighs in at 38 ounces and it is shockproof, it is waterproof, it is fog proof, it is nitrogen filled. It is first focal plane, the magnification range is five to 30. Now I have not had a 30X magnification scope, so I'm pretty excited to look at things really, really far away with this thing. So uh, you get that, you get your color instructions manual. Always read your manual, guys. It'll help you know your equipment for anything you buy and it'll avoid you returning it damaged, increasing the manufacturing cost and thus cost for customers downstream. So always read that. All right, we got a little chamois cloth in there. We have your quality control checklist. Nice to see that done. And even a second quality control checklist. So these things do have some pretty tight quality control and we like to see that. All right, next you're gonna get a sunshade in the box. Very nice to have for those sunny days. Additionally, you will get rings with the scope, which is pretty nice because you don't have to buy rings. And I really like how they do these little kind of tackle box for them. It has slots for everything. You get some extra screws. And what I like about these rings is that they've printed the torque specs on them. So at the base, you see 25 inch pounds there. And then at the actual top, you see 20 inch pounds. So you never forget what to torque those two. And then it also tells you the diameter of the tube, which is 34 millimeters or 1.67 inches. Next, we have the scope itself. It's a pretty nice looking scope. It does have a flip up cover on one end and then just a little removable cap on the eyepiece there. All right, nice uh, large turrets. They are in milliradians, adjustments in one tenth of a milliradian. And we can see the magnification there all the way up to 30. On the other side, we can see the little battery compartment and it has illumination. So you can change your illumination settings and it does have a parallax wheel. This is gonna go down to 25, and I assume that's meters because this is a metric scope. So 25 all the way, I think, to infinity. Let's see here. Yep, to infinity. So this should be good for any distances from a little under 25, because you can still use 25 all the way out to like a thousand yards if you're planning on using this on something with that sort of range capabilities. I've gone ahead and installed the sunshade here. That adds a little bit of length, about that much, to the end of the scope there, which will help you on those sunny days to avoid glare on your lens. And in bench rest competition, I have found that keeping that in your bag is a very good thing to do because sometimes that sun will hit you just right to necessitate needing that. So it's good that they include it. And that's basically how it looks with it on, just lengthens it up a little bit. But let's take a look at these turrets. So as I mentioned, this is a sub $350 first focal plane scope with a ton of features. Like you're definitely not gonna find another scope with this quality at that price. But at that price, you do sacrifice some premium features. Now it does still have a zero stop under this turret, which I've loosened already using the included Allen key that's included with the box there. And the turrets themselves, I, I like them. They're, they've got these grip marks on them. They're very positive clicks. Uh, easy to use, especially on the fly, which is good. And if you're using this for a bench rest scope, which is what we're gonna do, you don't really need 
you know, no tool adjustable turret caps because you're going to be shooting sighters and you're not going to be needing to constantly, you know, unscrew this. If it's a toolless one, put it back to, to exactly zero. You're going to be adjusting the whole time anyway. Um, but I've already got this one loosened up and I wanted to show you the zero stop under there. So that is a feature that is found on premium scopes. So you can see the little tab right here. Basically what you want to do is get your scope zeroed at whatever the best range for you is, and then get that so that it bumps into this knob right here. Um, I would usually set it a couple clicks below where you actually are zeroed so that, you know, when you're dialing back down, let's say after shooting something far away where you dialed up for elevation, you could then dial back down. And if you forget your where your scope was zeroed, that zero stop will hit right there, letting you know that, yep, you're at the bottom of the range where you were initially. So that is definitely a cool feature. And on the caps themselves to get them off, it's just four Allen keys, one, two, three, four at each of the quadrants there. And these are marked in one tenth mils. So very, very visually easy to see and easy to use because they're knurled and they're nice. So yes, it's not a toolless cap, but you know, I, what can you really expect for 350 bucks? I think it's still really good. So that kind of shows you the turrets and they do attach by just pinching on to the actual elevation uh, adjustment itself. So pretty simple system, but works great. And like we said before, it's got the parallax 25 yards to infinity and illumination. And that illumination will illuminate four MOA up and down on your reticle. So pretty useful. Let's take a look at the eye relief and some of the other features and we'll do a little bit of scope cam footage next. In terms of eye box and eye relief, the eye relief in the manual states that it's 3.5 inches. I find that to be right about spot on. So right there, I am getting a perfect field of view and it might even be a little bit longer eye relief uh, for some people. I thought maybe 3.75 would be even reasonable. I did measure it with a tape measure, but generous eye relief for sure. And like the eye box itself is good. And what I've also noticed is zooming through all the way to full power. I'm not getting much movement with the actual eye box and eye relief, which is good because if you can eliminate variables when your cheek weld is on this cheek piece and your eye is working in tandem with the scope, if you can eliminate as much variables as possible, it's going to translate to better accuracy downrange. So eye relief, good. Glass quality, I believe, is pretty good. And we'll show you what I got for scope footage next. Okay, so you guys know I always try to get you very honest reviews, good and bad, about everything. So here's one bad thing about this scope. Being that it has a small length right here, if you're using a side shot scope cam, what's happening is my rods are hitting the parallax wheel. And even if I rotate this, it's still going to hit either one of the turrets or something. So I end up with a gap there and I tried using these 3D printed spacers to get it to move out and it just looks really bad. So I'm sorry about that. I'll try to do my best by putting this gun in the rest there, holding it stationary and maybe holding my phone to see if I can get you some scope cam footage. We're just going to compare it to the 120 yard away fence post like we did with the last footage and I'll put that other footage up so I, I should be able to get something okay for you guys here but take that with a grain of salt because I am not able to use my side shot properly on this thing okay with no other way to mount a scope cam I'm sitting here literally holding the phone to the to the scope and this is the same plank that we were looking at before and I'm sorry for this guys, but this is about as good as I can do with no way to mount a scope cam to here. Okay, so that's about as good as I can do. This is on 30 power. You can see the illuminated reticle is illuminating 4 MOA, or sorry, 4 MRAD up and down. And the clarity is really good though. You'll have to trust me. But uh, that is as good as I can do for now with no proper way to mount a scope on here, guys. This is the best I could do with holding the cell phone up to the scope. Still came out okay. This is at 120 yards 
30 times magnification, so the highest magnification. I do have the illuminated reticle on, and that goes to four milliradians out on the reticle. And then here is the representation from my last video of all of these scopes, so you can kind of get a little bit of an idea as a comparison. Uh -huh. So next, let's do a little tracking test and see how that works out. All right, being that I can't get my side shot on this thing, I've got a camera down there and we're going to do a tracking test. I'm going to shoot at 50 yards. And then once we see where my shot hit, I'm going to adjust way up and way back down and we'll see if it tracks back to where my initial shot was. And it should if it's a good scope. All right, one more on this target. All right. So let's see if we track back to that. All right, I think I'm back where I was before. Let's see if it tracks. Yep, perfect. Okay, so that's, that is a pretty good test right there. And then just for the hell of it, let's go down also. I went way, way up, like almost two revolutions. All right, so there's down a revolution. And back up. Yep. Let's see if I aim a little bit lower and hit that red. There we go. All right, now I'll aim back dead center where I was Fire before. Timer off. Fire timer off. Okay, so she tracks perfectly. And this scope is going to stay on Andy's competition rifle. He is a pro shooter for Scout Air Guns. So um, I think I like this scope. I like the clarity of it. It's, I think it's really easily adjustable, nice audible clicks with the turrets and everything. It tracks well, and it's a 30 power. So if you're looking to shoot 100 yard bench rest, you want quite a lot of magnification. And most guys are running like 25 power. So this is the first 30 power that I've experienced and I have a positive impression of it. So links in the comments for these guys, check it out. And I am getting bit by mosquitoes all to hell. So that's going to do it for me and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.